God, our Father, we thank you for your word, your will, and your way. We thank you for this place and this purpose. We thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We thank you that you've given us another chance uh, to be all that we can be and to do those things that you've assigned to our hands. We thank you that you've kept us safe. <clears throat> we thank you for the precautions that are in place that keep us safe even in this place. But even as we leave these doors, even though we leave sterile and sanitized conditions, and we face a world that seems not to understand and embrace that we're going through some different times, teach us to respect each other, yes, Lord. to be cautious about those things that can be harmful. Mm -hmm. And then, Lord, give us the faith to take the remedies that will help us to Give us an edge to be better. Mm -hmm. yes. The wisdom that you've given man. For we know that wisdom only comes from God. Mm -hmm. We thank you and we praise you. We love you and we trust you. But I ask that you forgive me of my sins, that you might use me again. Mm -hmm. And I pray you'll be pleased with that which I preach. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 For those of you that have your Bible or have access to a Bible, we're going to ask you to turn to Paul's letter <clears throat> that's titled the Book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter and a very familiar uh, passage of Scripture. And for the conservation of time, I'll only read the first verse. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And for several months, we've been talking about faith and what faith is and what faith does, even in our church school lesson and last two, three uh, messages that uh, we've preached. And we want to continue with that thought mm -hmm. uh, because you can't wear faith out. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't please God without it. Amen. And you can't know too much about it. Uh, so the word of God for the people of God, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, and, and, and don't just quote it, read it, because that's power in the word of God. Yes, yes it is. Uh, yes, it that's is. power in reading the word of God, even if you need to read it from the screen, because uh, the devil, he knows us, but he doesn't tremble. Uh, but it's when we speak the word of God uh, that it sets him afright. Now faith. It's the substance of things hoped for, yeah. the evidence of things not seen. Amen. God's word. We want to tag this text. If you can believe it, you can achieve it. <clears throat> There's so many things in our lives that we probably believe we never would do or never could do. There's so many instances and situations that we've been through, employment, unemployment, death, and life, and uh, sickness, and circumstances that seem unmanageable on our own. But only through our faith in God has he given us a fresh perspective on life. Uh, it's that kind of thing that we have to believe that if he bring you to it, he can bring you through it. Uh, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. Faith is positive expectation. Yes, it is. Faith is not desire or wishing, hoping and wanting something to happen. Mm -hmm. Faith is not spiritual denial, mm -hmm. attempting through repetition and chanting or meditation or psyching yourself up by saying, I'm well, I'm well, I'm healed, I'm healed. Uh, when in actuality you're struggling with a life-threatening disease or sickness. These responses may be expressions of hope, but they are not faith. Uh -huh. Faith is not a feeling. Well. Faith is an attitude of abiding confidence. Mm -hmm. It is positive expectation. If you can believe it, mm -hmm. you can achieve it. Yeah. Some things you got to hear yourself say. Yeah. Some things you got to say to yourself. Yeah. Uh, oftentimes, and more often than not, you got to encourage yourself because uh, you tell somebody else what you're expecting God to do and they'll tell you what God can't do and you ought to turn right around and tell them don't tell me what God can't do 
Won't he do it? Yeah. He'll do it if you let him yeah. do it. Right. He'll do it if you let him do it. Right. He ain't going to do it because you just want him to do it. Uh -huh. You have not because you have not. I believe that God has established an irrefutable law in the universe. Yes. And one of them is the law of expectation. Yes, sir. We normally get what we expect. We normally act on what we think we can do. Uh, what we expect, we feel. Uh -huh. And we act how we feel. Uh, and so, the law of expectation suggests that if you can't conceive it, if you can't believe it, then it's not going to happen. Because you're not trusting God. You have to be able to see the unseen. Amen. Amen. Now, to some folks, that's crazy. Because we believe in the unaudible. We hear stuff that other folks don't hear. Y'all looking at me like I don't know what I'm talking about. How many times you said, God told you? Yeah. And there were four or five other folks in the room, but didn't nobody hear God but you. Yeah. You got to believe in the unaudible. Yeah. And you got to trust yeah. the unseen. Yeah. Yeah. You see, folks are always talking about what they can't see. Uh -huh. Well, if you need to see an ophthalmologist, see an ophthalmologist. But if you need faith, see God. Yeah. <laughs> Matthew chapter 9, we're privileged uh, to an episode in the life of Jesus in which he encountered a blind man yeah. seeking sight, and he was healed. Yeah. He sought healing. He desired healing, and he expected healing. He wasn't going to leave Jesus' presence without getting what he expected. Yeah. Faith is positive expectation. Mm -hmm. He was healed. But Jesus said to him, verse 29, Matthew chapter 9, he says to him, according to your faith, let it be so. He expected it. He uh, desired it. He hoped for it. He heard he was coming by. And, and, and with the greatest of expectation, desire, and request, yeah. Jesus says, you got it because you asked me for it. Yeah. You got it. He didn't have to walk across hell on a spider well. He didn't have to speak in tongues. He didn't have to do all kinds of acts of contrition. He sought him. He believed him. He expected him to do for him what he needed. He lifted him up. And he got what it What's the point? God has the power. You and I must have the faith, the positive expectation that God will work things out. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. The old saints at the old church said they understood that that meant that he would do it either on this side or the other side. And then they say, Judge, uh, with the hands on the hips, I can see Sister Grace now uh, having the saying, You'll understand it better. <laughs> by and by. Yeah. You haven't been through what they've been through. Right. They've come up the rough side of the mountain. Uh -huh. And they understood that they had come leaning mm -hmm. and depending on the Lord. Yeah. And they were unabated. They were unashamed to testify uh, that I ain't been what I always ought to be, and I may not be what I should be, but thank God I'm not what I should be. Life have dealt some folks some horrible blows, Amen. and they just kept bouncing back. They just kept bouncing back because somehow they believed that there was a God somewhere. Our expectation influence our whole life, mm -hmm. our happiness, 
our health, our marriage, our careers, mm -hmm. our relationship with others, and our abilities. If you can believe it, you can achieve it. You can have it. And, and it won't be a struggle. It won't be a strain, and it won't be associated with a whole lot of pain. Permit me to emphasize this point. We get to choose our boundaries, establish our limitations, determine our success in life according to our faith in the power of God. If you read scrutinizing the whole 11 chapter, it just talks about the faith walk of men who never saw Jesus. Yeah. All right. Men who just expected God to keep his promise. Men that expected God, and women who expected God to do what he said he was going to do. Yeah. There are at least two basic paths and philosophies by which we can live our lives. We can live by fear, or we can live by faith. All right. We can live by optimism, mm -hmm. or we can live by pessimism. Mm -hmm. When we declare with our lips and lies, my God can do anything. Yeah. Why don't you say it with me? Look at somebody and say it with positive expectation. My God, my God can do, can do anything. anything. No adding into that. Anything. anything. If he selected to fail, he could fail. Yeah. If failing was in my best interest, he would fail. Right. But he can do. Yeah. I love it when you help me. My God can do. Yeah. That's positive expectation. That's a declaration with my lip and my faith in God. Right. That posture and proclamation uh, of positive expectation is a testimony based on our faith in God. Yeah. Never allow what seems like an impossible situation to intimidate you. Yeah. Let it motivate you. Uh -huh. How many of you know and how many of you have lived through the experience of when folks tell you you can't do something yeah. that makes you more determined to do it? Yeah. Everybody who run into you and tell you and try to discourage you and uh, discredit you and, and put you down and tell you why you can't do it. Look where we would be if we had to listen to folks, if our four parents had to listen to folks, right. tell them they couldn't send their child to college. Yeah. 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 How many, and then there have been some folks who, 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 even our parents and grandparents were limiting their expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, they, were, they were proud and they've done well with a third grade education. And, and, and they were happy that if you just go down to the plant and Mr. Charlie give you a job too and he speak for you and so. And that would have been the pattern for the rest of our life. But there were some folks that dared the unusual. There were some folks that believed that they could go to work for Alabama Power. They could go to work for Mountain Brook Police Department. You know how many folks told them they wasn't going to make it? Uh -huh. How many folks that you thought were your friends uh -huh. that were digging this for you? Yeah. Then instead of lifting you up, yeah. they were putting you down. Yeah. But you made it. Yeah. Your life is a testimony that he not only kept you safe, but he gave you grace. Yeah. You can live how you want to live. You can live by faith or you can live by fear. But you're going to live till you die. And then you're going to be dead longer than you ever live. Enthusiasm and faith are contagious. Our church is an encouragement. And, and, and some folks say, you are not to brag. Well, you... I'm bragging on God. Uh -huh. Our church is encouragement. Yes. Yes. We remain faithful during the pandemic. Yes. We've grown, we've sown, we've bought, we've done what we needed to do. Yes. Uh, we've maintained salaries and take yes. care of 
of mission and reached out beyond in benevolence in all kind of ways. We've done what a church ought to do. I run into folks all the time when I tell them we haven't you started back having church. I said we never stop having church. All right. I heard the Holy Spirit loud and clear. If the governor of this state can say that the ABC store is essential. Do y'all know the ABC store never closed? Yeah. Churches all over this country closed and the whiskey store open. You decide where you're going to get your spirit from. <laughs> I, I ain't talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. <laughs> Enthusiasm and faith is contagious. And because we were enthusiastic about it, folks showed up. Yeah. Because deacons were committed, folks showed up. Yeah. Because trustees were willing to still do the business of the church, folks showed up. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right, brother. God will do it yeah. if you let him do it. Yeah. If you can believe it, you can achieve it. Yes, sir. Now, that's not a prescription for foolishness. We still need to, if you're not vaccinated, to wear a mask for other folks. We still need the social discipline. Uh, our church was, was stirred last, last night. Mm -hmm. So that you came into a fresh environment this morning. Mm -hmm. You still got to take the precautions. Yeah. And with every new level come new devils. Yeah. It's a devil named... What is it, Delta? Yeah. Delta. Yeah. yeah. I flew Delta last week. I don't want to fly them no more either. <laughs> I was delayed two and a half hours in Baltimore, missed my connection in Detroit, had to spend the night uh, at a hotel in Detroit, and they wouldn't even pay for it. So Delta is a devil. <laughs> It's a dreaded disease. <laughs> but with new levels come new devil. But we've got to believe that God will take care of us. That God still hears and answers prayer. That God is the provider of wisdom to man. Now he gives them sense enough to make variants of antibiotics to help our bodies. But he give us sense enough to wash our hands. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cover your mouth when you sneeze. Because uh -huh. if you're sneezing too much and you're trying to sneeze on me, I'm thinking you're trying to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just... Hey, man. You see, we can be real and optimistic at the same time. Mm -hmm. We don't have to be real. You don't have to be pessimistic, everything, doom and destruction. You can be real. Yeah. Face the fact, learn all you can. Don't get your information from the wrong sources. Use the gift that God has given you, your mama paid for you, to read. Amen. 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 And then be prayerful. Amen. Amen. Trusting in his holy word. Mm -hmm. Leaning on his everlasting arms. So you can be real. Mm -hmm. Young folks say, keep it real. <laughs> this ain't no joke. It would kill you. <laughs> keep it real, but keep it be optimistic also that God is able and that God 
not only gave us five cents, but he gave us a six cents. And I know common sense ain't so common no more. <laughs> I've run into too many folks that just ain't got common sense. But then we can trust his word. Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know, for all things work together for the good of them who love God and are called according to his purpose in Christ Jesus. Perhaps you're, in, perhaps you're inclined to always see the problem and never see the possibility. Y'all know some folks like that? You may be the type of person to see each cup as half empty rather than half full. You are programmed to live in the past and to focus on history. All you know is what has happened. You don't believe that God can do a new thing. You don't believe in progressive revelation. You just think it ought to be the way it used to be, and that's the way it used to be, and that's the way it is. And, and you end up putting down people. Mm-hmm. You end up being prejudiced and racist and gender sensitive uh, because you are living your life pessimistic. So you missed the door when it was open because you were somewhere complaining. You missed the door when it was open because somebody told you to do something different and you refused and you thought that made you a man. Yeah. And so the opportunity to pass you by, the promotion passed you by, the job fired you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it wasn't them, it was you. Yeah. It was you not using what God has given you. It was you not believing God. You not believing you could achieve it unless you did it or they did it the way you said do it. Then you find out it won't work. And you spend the rest of your life in defeat. In Paul's first letter to Timothy, he suggested there were people in the church who had an unhealthy interest in controversy and criticism and who was argumentative. And he says, avoid them. Don't listen to them. Don't spend your time with them. You got to take in positive energy. You got to live life on the positive side. Mm -hmm. I can hear Paul in every circumstance, every situation. He said, I've been knocked down, but I didn't stay down. Because criticism is contagious, and it's just as contagious as the Corona-19 virus. Watch it, pay attention. When you're around somebody and they start griping, Mm -hmm. they start condemning, and they start putting somebody else down, it won't be long somebody else will be acting just like them. Their children would take on their attitude. Their children would end up leading the fighting and feeling entitled uh, because somebody else is negative. And, 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 and they find somebody to agree with them. And then we give them permission to keep living like that. We don't help them. We don't tell them. We know better and we let them buy with it. You see, you can't be critical and creative at the same time. Loose lips. The Lord trying to do something, and you're trying to sink the ship. The Lord's on the main line, and you're on the party line. Critical people talk things down. Creative people build things up. In Joshua chapter 10, we find some interesting instructions to the Israelites. Mm -hmm. The walls of Jericho stood between them and the promised land. God instructed them to walk around the city for seven days in absolute 
silence. He said, walk around it for seven days, but don't nobody say a word. Walk around it for seven days, verse 10 said, in silence. God knew it would only take a couple of critical complainers to ruin his plan. If you allow me the benefit of my holy imagination, the conversation would have gone something like this. This is plain silly. <laughs> Joshua is out of his All this marching don't make sense. I can't see it. We look like fools. Then somebody else would say, you're right. Somebody need to say something. We need to have a meeting and take a vote on this foolishness. I bet God has not told him anything. Three days would have been enough. God said seven. And he ain't said nothing to you. But all of a sudden, you know everything. You know the will of God, the plan of God, and the purpose of God. The word of God for the people of God. Mm -hmm. He says, you should not shout or make any noise with your voice, Mm -hmm. nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, shout. (laughs) Joshua 6 and 10. Anybody who is constantly negative is afraid. Before I take it back, I add more to it. Somebody said, push, Pastor. All right, I go on then. When we are insecure, we become defensive. Too many people belong to the Pestic International Club. They're card-carrying members of the Nobody Can Make Me Do Anything Club. The, and the club got members too. Yes. Got president, vice president, mm-hmm. officers who think and act just like them. Mm-hmm. Where does this type of attitude and negativity come from? The root cause is fear. Mm-hmm. Fear of change, fear of being found out that you don't know much as you think you know. Refuse to grow mm-hmm. and won't go. Ain't nobody going to make me do nothing. Ain't nobody going to make me go nowhere. We've heard a thousand times, right? Genesis 3 and 10. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned, you know what Adam told God? God said, I was looking for you. Where were you? He said, I hid myself because I was afraid. He was naked and afraid. He had no covering, so he couldn't hide. Yes, sir. And he was afraid of being found out, for he had sinned. That's where negativity comes from, fear and afraid to be found out. Mm -hmm. When we develop the confidence, security, and self-esteem that come from knowing Christ, knowing Christ our Savior cares for all our needs, and that no problem is too great for him to handle, Mm -hmm. you will have a level of expectation, a positive attitude that declares it can be done. I think it was President Obama who said, yes, we can. can. I stopped on my way to heaven to tell you, yes, you can. can. Our choices of attitude in life and toward life is critical to our answered prayers. It announces what we expect. How can you pray negatively? God, don't bless me. God, I, 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 I need a breakthrough. I need a healing. I need some help, but I know you ain't going to do it. Go 
I, I heard them say what you're doing for others, but I know you won't do it for me. <laughs> because everybody always, somebody said push. <laughs> In Genesis chapter 32 through 33, we're introduced to a man named Jacob who was in the midst of an attitude alteration. His story testifies to us how God works with us and in us mm -hmm. to change our attitude from hurtful mm. to helpful, from negative to positive, from demonic to delightful. God had been at work slowly and surely in the life of Jacob to transform his attitude toward life and in life. Mm. For more than 20 years, Jacob's life had been characterized and demonstrated and dominated by deceit and selfishness. Mm -hmm. Jacob wanted what he wanted. Yeah. He worked, schemed, connived, convinced and manipulated others to get what he wanted, even at the expense of anybody else. Y'all know Jacob? Yes, sir. He stole his brother's birthright. Mm -hmm. This attitude was cultivated in him by his mother, mm -hmm. Rebecca, mm -hmm. what started in childhood, continued in adulthood. Jacob literally means the supplanter, yes, a one who steals the position and standing of someone else. Mm -hmm. God renamed Jacob. He renamed him to Israel, yeah. mm -hmm. which means God thrives or God fights. God desire was to transform Jacob's outlook on life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jacob had been living his entire life with the attitude that God owed him something. Mm -hmm. That God was somehow fighting against him to keep him from having what rightly belonged to him. God's goal was to transform Jacob's attitude to help him see that he was not fighting against him, but God was fighting for him. Mm -hmm. What was taking place in the episode of ja Jacob wrestling with an angel mm -hmm. are three things. We've heard the story all the time how he wrestled with an angel. Mm -hmm. First thing, Jacob, what Jacob was had to be thrown out. Mm -hmm. He had to be changed. Mm -hmm. His attitude had to be renewed, reshaped. What he was called had to be cast aside. Mm -hmm. So God changed his name from sinner to saint, mm -hmm. from Jacob to Israel. Mm -hmm. And how he walked had to be changed. Mm -hmm. So the angel threw him down, changed his name, mm -hmm. touched him in the hollow of his hip. He did not leave walking the same way that he came. FYI. This message has your name on it. Mm -hmm. You might need to change your name. Yeah. Right. Some folks are proud of what they're known by. Mm -hmm. uh, some folks need to let little baby die. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So they used to call you Razor, and you need to maybe, maybe Razor need to die. Boom, boom, and shay, shay, and nay, nay, and <laughs> maybe they need to die to the person that God wants you to be, right. to the name that God has given you. Amen. 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 Uh, there's a boy in our neighborhood who used to call him Lil Pump. <coughs> he grew up to be a big pump. <laughs> Jacob had to change his name. God had to change his attitude. 
And what he gives us is the story in the Bible of him wrestling with an angel, and the angel does all of that for him. He changed his name, he changed his attitude, and he changed the way he walked. Oh, he was proud. <coughs> Pride come before destruction. Yeah. Anybody here ever realized that you needed an attitude adjustment? Yeah. And only God can do it because it's infectious and it can be contagious. But if you can believe it, you can achieve it. I guess I better go ahead and close my Easter speech, right? I want to share the story of David and Goliath. Mm -hmm. And you're very familiar with it. Go ahead. The problem was they kept rehearsing their problem over and over. Every day Goliath came up and told them how sorry they were. Mm -hmm. Every day Goliath came out and told them and challenged them if there were one man that would fight him and one man that would stand up to him. Every day he came out in his uh, war raggade and all of his stature and challenge the nation of Israel, yes. God's holy people. Uh -huh. All of them was cowering and tying down, and yes. one little shepherd boy believed that he could destroy Goliath. And he didn't need all that stuff either. Uh -huh. He said, I killed a bear and a lamb, mm -hmm. and all I needed was my slingshot and five smooth stones. But what has to happen is we need to stop rehearsing our problem over and over and over again. I didn't finish school. Well, get a GED. It don't matter you're 65, that's okay. If that, that's limiting you, that's a problem for you, that's a good testimony for your grandchildren. Stop rehearsing your problem over and over again. I'm not telling you to pretend or ignore it. Do something about it. And just believe that with God's help, he can help you handle anything. Amen. Psalms 5 and 3, David said, the New Linear Translation, listen to my voice in the morning, Lord, every morning. I bring you my request, and you are waiting expectantly. Mm -hmm. God wants us to come to him. Yes. He says, ask and you shall receive. Yes. Seek and ye shall find. Yes. Knock and doors will be opened unto you. Psalms 18 and 28, David reveals his optimistic look. You, O oh Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. Mm -hmm. Believing in advance, in a practical principle that is taught throughout the scripture, yes. you must believe, then you will receive. Mm -hmm. The text says, now faith. Not old faith, mm -hmm. not unfounded faith, mm -hmm. but it says it has to be a present positive proclamation of faith. Mm -hmm. Now faith, now faith. faith for today. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow has enough trouble of its own, right. but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. All right. We don't have to walk in defeat. We can walk in victory. Right. What if, what if, is a statement of doubt. 
It's not a statement of faith. Mark chapter 9, you're familiar with the story. Jesus had been up on the mountaintop, and they said, let's build three tabernacles, one for five. And they came down, and uh, he told them the work was in the valley. They got down there, and the disciples had been left down there. Uh, they were trying to heal this boy, and they couldn't. Hold and the Bible said they could not. They could not. And, and, and the father came, and then he saw Jesus. He said to Jesus, I've been to your disciples, and uh, they couldn't heal my son. said he's a lunatic. Sometimes uh, he falls in the fire, sometimes in the water, and we just can't control him, and I love him so much, and I, I, I wish I could get some help for him. He said, but your, your disciples could not. Good. Jesus looked at them and said, it's because of your faith. This kind of casting out comes by fasting and prayer. It comes by being ready, by expecting God to work a miracle. And, 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 and the man looks at Jesus, uh, and he says to him, if you can help my son, I wish you would help him if you can help my son. If you can do anything for him, have compassion on us and help us. Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible. If you only believe. As the saintly brothers and sisters of the old Shady Grove Church, Granville Avenue, at the end of the cul-de-sac, they would talk about having that kind of faith. I can remember hearing them saying, there's a brighter day, Amen. and there's a brighter side uh -huh. somewhere. How you know, how, how many of you realize things are, are not the way they look? Amen. God knows what he's doing. Uh -huh. Things are not the way they always look. Well, well. If you can only believe, mm, yeah. if you can believe, all things are possible. Yeah. If you can believe, if you can believe, you can achieve it. Isaiah 54 and 17, the prophet reassured the people, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yeah. John 11 and 21, Martha came uh, to Jesus when she heard he was in town, that he was coming. He had tarried after they sent for him. She came to him and said, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have, wouldn't have died. And, 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 and she began to lament about him not being there and all this. Verse 22 uh, here's the positive proclamation. She says, but I know, even now, God will do anything you ask him yeah. to do. That's positive proclamation. That's affirming that I know it can happen, but it's going to take faith in God. Yeah. Verse 25, Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believed in me, though he's dead, yet shall he live again. Uh -huh. And then he asked the question, the paramount question, believe it thou this? If you can believe it, yeah. you can achieve it. Second Peter 3 and 9 tells us that God is not slack concerning his promises toward us. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. If you can believe it, you can achieve it. Always know that God is up to something. Yeah. God knows what he's doing. Yeah. The story I like to tell about these angels that were traveling, probably extracted from uh, Michael London in what's that series, Touched by an Angel? Uh, these two angels were traveling, a young angel, an old angel, and uh, they were going about the earth. They were supposed to bless folks and help folks to see what God is doing. So they come upon this castle. And the man who owns the castle was there, and he had all these rooms, and they needed somewhere to large for the night. And he told them, harsh kind of way, Deacon Thomas, you can stay in the dungeon. So they believe the word of God, whatever provision, wherever you stop, accept it. And, and 
They didn't have done it. While they were down there, they discovered this hole in the wall. On the other side of that wall was gold bars. Rooms and rooms of gold bars. So they spent all night patching the wall, making it look better. The next night, they needed to find larger, and they stopped at this old farmer's house. Nobody but him and his wife and old cow. Farmer's husband went and got nothing. That's all we got, but uh, we just believe that you were sent by God. They got out of their bed and gave them their bed to sleep in. Somewhere during the night, the farmer's cow died. The young angel couldn't understand that. And so he said to the old angel, he said, you know, why we didn't do something? Why God didn't let us do something? Last night we stayed in this castle and we remodeled the room, fixed it up. And, and he said, the reason we did that at the castle, so that he'll never find the gold. Mm -hmm. He said, but that's all he had. That's the only livelihood they had. This cow, and they sell the milk from the cow to make a living, the modest living that they had. He said, what happened last night was the deaf angel came for the farmer's wife. Mm -hmm. I gave him the cow instead. <laughs> Just know that God knows what's best for us. Yeah. Yeah. That God is up to something. Yes. may not be the way it seems. It may not seem the way you want it to look. It may not come out the way you had it planned or thought it was. But no, he may have been coming for you and he gave me your car instead. Yes. He may have been coming for you, but there's some stuff that was between you and him. So he gave him this stuff yes. and kept you alive. Faith gives us access yeah. to the power of God. Yeah. Yeah. How to come out, how to come forth, how to live residually, how it is that we can declare that God can do anything. Yeah. Faith gives us access to that power that God gives us through grace. Yeah. Gives us access to teach us how to get out of a rut how to take risk, how to expect the best, how to wait for the answers, how to follow instructions, yeah. how to keep on keeping on when your get up and go has got up and went, mm. how to rebound from a failure. How do I do that, Pastor? Mm. Focus your faith yeah. on God and not your situation. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Trust him, yeah. and not your instincts. Not your history, not your heart if it's here, because the heart of man is here. His conscious and subconscious, where it is that everything is stored and directed. Trust him and believe in God. If you can believe it, you can achieve it. Amen. And let me just tell you, if you're trusting, yeah you'll keep bouncing back. Mm -hmm. If you're trusting, yeah. though they slay you, yet will you Trust. serve him. Yeah. If you trust and believe in him, yes. you'll declare if they destroy my body in three days, I'll raise it up again. Yeah. Didn't he do it? Yeah. They killed him. Yeah. They killed him. Yeah. Crucified him. Graveyard dead. Yeah. No man took his life, but he gave up his life for his friends. Amen. He declared, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto myself. Yeah. He kept his word. Amen. He kept his promise. Mm -hmm. He died. Mm -hmm. I believe that he was dead. Amen. Graveyard dead. Yeah. Buried him in a barry tomb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He just needed it for the weekend. Yeah. Early. Early, Early, before quick got ready, yeah. before the sun and moon swapped places in the hemisphere, yeah. before the dew dried on the grass, uh -huh. he got up with all power, all power. on heaven and earth uh -huh. in his hand. Yeah. And I believe because he lives, yeah. 
because to get even with our enemies, he refused to stay dead. Yes. I believe because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Yes. Because he lives, my living is not in vain. Yes. I believe because he lives, there's a brighter day, a brighter day. ahead. Yes. Anybody know him? Yes. Is he all right? Yes. Can he be trusted? Yes. Has he been good to you? Yes. If he's been real good to you, yes. say yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 That's all right. Yeah. Doors of the church open. This is the invitation to discipleship. Yes. Whosoever will, let them come.